Hello students, we have already discussed six grounds relating to judicial control over administrative discretion of administrative authorities. In this session, I would like to discuss the remaining two grounds. The seventh ground is judicial discretion. At times, the courts have used a vague phrase judicial discretion to restrict the exercise of discretion power by an authority. For instance, it was observed by the Supreme Court in Registrar Trademarks versus Ashok Chandra Rakhit with reference to the power of the registrar to register a trademark that the exercise of the power conferred on registrar always remained as a matter of discretion to be exercised, not capaciously or arbitrarily, but according to the sound principle laid down for the exercise of all judicial discretion. Through the use of term judicial discretion, the courts would read implied limitations into statutory powers and quash an administrative order if the authority crosses those limitations. The term thus indicates that such discretion is not absolute or unqualified. However, its use does not seem to be necessary as the courts have read implied restrictions on discretion power even without characterizing it as judicial discretion. In any case, the term can be applied properly only to quasi-judicial bodies and not to administrative bodies. Most of the principles which apply to control administrative discretion and are being discussed here apply mutatis mutandis to the exercise of discretion by tribunals or other quasi-judicial bodies. Thus, a quasi-judicial body cannot be directed by a higher authority to exercise its discretion in a particular manner. Such a body is to exercise its discretion on relevant grounds and not on irrelevant grounds and so on. And final ground for judicial review of administrative discretion is unreasonableness. At times, the statute may require the authority to act reasonably. The courts have also stated that the authority should consider the question fairly and reasonably before taking action. The term unreasonable means more than one thing. It may embody a host of grounds mentioned already as that the authority has acted on irrelevant or extraneous consideration or for an improper purpose or malafide, etc. Viewed thus, unreasonableness does not furnish an independent ground of judicial control of administrative powers apart from the grounds already mentioned. The term may include even those cases where the authority has acted according to law but in wrong manner and where it has acted according to law and in a right manner but on wrong grounds. Sometimes statutes itself provide for reasonable exercise of the discretion power. Under such conditions, the authority concerned had to act reasonably and the court will interfere with the order where it has not been passed under the reasonable belief. Unreasonableness may also mean that even though the authority has acted according to law in the sense that it has not acted on irrelevant grounds or exercised power for an improper purpose, yet it has given more weight to some factors than they deserved as compared with other factors. Interference on this ground requires going into the relative importance of different factors and their balancing which amounts to substituting the discretion of the judiciary for that of the executive. The courts do not normally exercise such wide powers to interfere in the exercise of administrative discretion. Unreasonableness may furnish a ground for intervention by the courts when the constitution of India or the statute so requires. Thus, Article 14 of the constitution guarantees equality before law but the courts have permitted reasonable classification to be made. Where the law is valid under the article, a discriminatory action would still be violative of the equality clause. Similarly, Article 19 requires only reasonable restrictions to be imposed on the rights specified therein. In Rohatas Industries Limited v. S.D. Agarwal, the Supreme Court quashed the, an administrative action taken by the government under section 237 of the Companies Act 1956 on the ground that no reasonable body 
would have reached impugned conclusions. Here, the court considered the question as to whether any reasonable body, much less expert body like central government would have reasonably made the impugned order on the basis of material before it. In such cases, the test of judicial intervention is not what the court consider as unreasonable, but a decision which it considers that no reasonable body could have come to decision that is when the action is oppressive or falsely observed. In Shoyanath versus Appellate Assistant Commissioner, the Supreme Court has remarked that the words reason to believe used in Income Tax Act suggests that the belief must be that of an honest or reasonable person based upon reasonable grounds but not on mere suspicion. There may be cases where the administrative authority might have exercised his power without any reason. In such cases, the court would quash the order. The Supreme Court observed in KL Trading Company Limited vs. State of Meghalaya that to attract judicial review of administrative action, the applicant must show that the administrative action suffers from vice of arbitrariness, unreasonableness and unfairness. Merely because the court may feel that the administrative action is not justified on merit can be no ground for interference. The court can only interfere when the process of making such decision is wrong or suffers from the vice of arbitrariness, unfairness and unreasonableness. It may be mentioned here that in France, the reasonableness of the administrative acts or decisions is examined on a much broader scale than in common law countries. In France, any act can be brought to the test of reason. Every administrative act or decision is thought to be proper and lawful only if it is reasonable. With this, we have covered all the eight grounds relating to judicial control over administrative discretion of administrative authorities. With this, I would like to conclude this session. Thank you.